Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're looking forward to having our guest, Jimmy Mitchell, join us in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk story about culture, about art, about redeeming our, redeeming our culture. That's going to be, I'm really looking forward to, to doing that. One of my favorite works of art, I have a very rare opportunity to see some incredible art that most people don't get to do because normally I'm surfing, surfing or paddling or walking along the beach every day. And one of my favorite works of art is daddies making sandcastles with their children. And it, they can be incredible. They can be just a little, it could be just a little simple little sandcastle, or it could be a fortress that's designed to withstand the surf, or it could be something really fancy. Uh, maybe even they make uh, little, you know, creatures and things like this on the sandcastles. And it's called uh, installation art, I guess, uh, because uh, by high tide, those castles are gone. But it's just so beautiful to me to see the spirit of the father who's obviously is an, has, has built sandcastles in his youth, and now is teaching his children how to do that. You know, and my daughter, uh, Naomi, uh, has a, uh, uh, her, one of her, she's, a, she's an artist. She has always been involved in an art commune or doing her own art, art collective, I guess they call them. And she has a, she has a uh, small gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And she does installation art. She'll go on and she'll build this beautiful project inside of a, maybe, I don't know, some, a, a school building or something or, a, or an office building or something. And it stays up for maybe a week or six weeks and then it's gone. I mean, it's just, it just kind of tells a story about our lives too, that we are a work of art. We are the work of art of the Lord and that we have, uh, we're here and then we're gone. And what kind of impression are we going to leave on, on people while we're here? You know, Father Robert, Robert Spitzer in his book, uh, his, in his book, um, his five books that he's written, uh, on the soul's upward yearning talks about how our soul desires justice, truth, love, and a sense of going home. But one of the parts of our spiritual rational soul that's uniquely infused into human beings by God is a desire for beauty. And you know, when I'm on the beach, uh, people go, wow, look at that beautiful sunset. Um, and you know, if you point at a beautiful sunset, um, and all you see is the sunset, you're missing out because you should be seeing the creator behind that sunset. It's like when my children are little, I would point my finger, I go, look at that. And they'd look off in the distance like, what are you pointing at, dad? And I go, look at my finger, isn't it great? You know, the stupid dad joke. But that's what we end up in a world when we look at beauty and we don't look past it to see our beautiful creator. And so we have Jimmy Mitchell with us today. He has a, uh, I think it's, it's an essential and very difficult ministry in bringing the word, the world beauty and truth through his ministry, lovegoodculture.com. Aloha, Jimmy Mitchell. How you doing, Barry? It's great to be with you. I'm doing great. Where are you today, by the way? I'm actually in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Is that where you usually live? No, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is, as you probably can imagine, a hub of creativity and, and faith. So I'm, I'm already kind of missing home today. That's right. So, and your and your major artistic bent is in music, or or is, or what what is it in? Yeah, primarily music. So I write little film scores, typically for movies that don't exist, and I'm surrounded by singer songwriters across every genre of music. And uh, yeah, that's kind of at the heart of our mission is coming alongside these these recording artists and musicians. It's so cool. You mean to to bring them? You know, music is so powerful. In fact, I understand. I understand that uh, Lucifer, who was one of the chief angels, was responsible for worship. And that's crazy. And so that his his he obviously had a uh, you know music worship you know and music go hand in hand. And so you can see his use of music in the world mm. today. Mm-hmm. And we need to bring, uh, we need to invade this world with God's beauty and truth and the beauty of, of not just music, but every form of culture. That's right. To, and it, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it took us a little while to, to see that, in fact, this is so much bigger than just music. You know, about six years ago, we launched Love Good very much with a vision of rallying around singer-songwriters. We did a 45-city 
house concert tour in about 60 days. It was crazy. That's um, tough, man. That is so tough. It was grueling. But then after a while, it became really clear that we had a foundation of, of support. We had patrons who believed in what we were about. And more than just musicians on our hand, we had visual artists. We had uh, film writers and, and authors as well. Yeah. You know, and then I look at, you know, we have a lot in common, a lot to talk about because what we're trying to do with our, our reality TV show on EWT and the motorcycle TV show is cinematic, uh, and artistic. It's really tough to do a 26 minute or 28 minute show on an extremely low budget and deliver that. But I think, uh, uh, Shane Wozniak, my son, uh, does an incredible job, uh, with that budget and does some incredible artistic work because we want to grab people's attention with the art and have that beauty uh, open up, open them up to the truth. Mm. Is that a good way of saying it? That's a beautiful way of saying it. Uh, in fact, that's really our instinct that beauty knows no enemy. So if we mm. can simply pierce people's hearts, captivate them first, and then let truth and goodness invade next, um, then, you know, I think we'll not just see conversion of heart, but evangelization of culture. We, we've got to let beauty lead and, and let beauty speak first. Well, the very word culture has the root word in it, cult, mm. which, is, which is religion. That's right. all, all culture is rooted in man's upward yearning. It just it, it finds different expressions. Sometimes it results in a downward yearning too, but something for that, for that something out there. Hey, Jimmy, um, so you're this musician you go on this long tour. Uh, did you ever fall off the stage? <laughs> you know, we, we, we would typically be playing in living rooms and backyards, so there weren't too many stages no decks. to fall off of. Well, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tell you something. So I'm going to give you public relations <laughs> advice here. You got to fall off a stage, dude. <laughs> if you don't fall off a stage, you're just not legit. <laughs> yeah, Am the worst right? ever happened. We, I, had a, I had a piano or a really like a, a big, nice keyboard fall flat on my, my lap when I was playing it and, and go crashing down uh, to the ground to everybody's sort of awe and wonder. It, 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 I had to recover from that moment, but it wasn't the same thing like falling off stage. <laughs> well, I mean, so what happened to the keyboard? Did you, did you keep playing or the show must go on or did the keyboard break? Or I just laughed my rear end off uh, and, and, and tried to, to, to make a, a solid joke. And, and then we got the keyboard set up within 30 seconds and we just kept on going. Yeah. You know what's interesting is at times like that, like when I do public speaking, or I used to actually lead worship in a Catholic charismatic group way back, way, 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 way back. It always seemed that once I had made that, made that first mistake, things went better. So true. It, you so it's no longer, true. Yeah, no longer going on my strength, but on the Lord's strength, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are you playing to uh, all kinds of different groups? Yeah. Not, so I mean, yeah. really our, our primary demographic is, is believe it or not millennials. We've got a lot of people in their twenties and thirties who are crazy about love good. Those are the ones quickest to, to sign up as patrons, which are the folks who subscribe and get all, all of our content before anybody else. Um, but they're also the ones most likely to, to host a house concert, to, to bring me in to speak at a young adult or a youth conference. I do a lot of traveling and it seems like uh, even beyond the walls of the church, we have this growing interest among uh, Christians across denominations who are saying, actually there's a power here that we're not tapping into, right? It, it's not enough to just stand on a street corner and preach. We've got to first win people over, win their hearts. Uh, and then, you know, we can, through friendship and accompaniment, bring them into the heart of God himself. Do you ever find the opportunity to sing to uh, non-Christians? I mean, like, uh, you know, a coffee shop or someplace like that, where you just kind of have an open yeah. forum. So that's what's interesting. Most of the singer-songwriters that we work with are putting out what you would call secular music in the same way that the Lord of the Rings is a secular work of, of great literature, right? It's mm. not obviously Catholic. It is subtly and deeply Catholic, rooted in a sacramental imagination. That's what our artists are all about, uh, which means that primarily they don't play in churches. Believe it or not, almost all of our events uh, take place uh, in pubs, in homes. So in happy to hear groups. that. I'm so happy yeah, to hear that. Yeah, and there's a lot, a lot of good things happening in the church, right? We, we've got a lot of great musicians and and artists. Well, but you know, but but but, but yeah, the Lord yeah. didn't say go out into the church and compel them to come to the wedding feast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So go out into the byways and compel them to come. And there's nothing more compelling, you know, than than 
music or, or art to my wife and I love to watch the voice, you know, and I pretend not to, but I love to watch the voice because it's just some, sometimes it's just totally captivating and you can see, you can see the window in, in people's soul sometimes when they let you, when they're singing, we're talking to Jimmy Mitchell from lovegoodculture.com. When we get back, we're going to find out a little bit about what makes him tick. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we want to remind you that we have uh, our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. It's got so many great things there. We have the Ocean Sunrise Catechism there that's posted daily. We have the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show that you're wa- listening to right now. You can actually watch that on YouTube. If you go there and press the subscribe button, ring that little bell. We do a lot of behind the scenes stuff on our long ride home shoot. And there's a lot of crazy stuff that just Cindy and I do. Like I think probably the best video on there is her and I at the Spam Jam in Waikiki, which takes place right in front of our house. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And our guest, Jimmy Mitchell. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, we want to uh, invite you to go to our Patreon page. It's uh, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure Patreon page and become a donor. If you do, uh, at, at, the, at the coffee mug level, you get all of our Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows really early, which means about right now, if you were subscribed, you'd be getting the YouTube version of our radio shows about nine months before they air. And uh, if you if you subscribe at the twenty dollar level, you get all of our long ride home TV shows, of total all seasons pass access. Plus, every time we create a new episode, uh, before it's all canned together in a season and delivered to the network, you get to look at the director's cut right away, and you have permanent access to it, and you can uh, you, know, you know watch it when your family comes over. So that's our Patreon page, Bear Wozniak. Deep adventure. I got to tell you, a lot of us uh, dinosaurs don't really know what that is, but it's a great way for people to say, I specifically want to support this ministry on a monthly basis so that they can have, they know they can rely, rely on that funding so their ministry can go forth. And our guest, Jimmy Mitchell, is here. He also has a Patreon account. Hey, Jimmy, uh, for us dinosaurs out there, explain to us how Patreon works and how they can benefit about, by being your patron. You know, it's funny, uh, Love Good came uh, into the picture about six months before Patreon. So before there was such a thing as Patreon, we were talking mm. about patronage. Really? So our entire system is set up in-house, which means we don't have a Patreon oh, account. Oh, okay. So when you it's, heard that word patron, it automatically I know, triggered it. Well, well, thanks be to God, Patreon is helping us define our terms because mm. most people had no idea what patronage was six years ago. So think about the history of the church, right? Like we have been for 2,000 years, um, a church of patronage. Every, everything from uh, our beautiful churches uh, with their stained glass Michelangelo's windows, sculptures. All the way down. That's yeah. exactly right. To the great requiem masses of, of Mozart and Beethoven. So to, to come alongside you and your Patreon account, to come alongside Lovegood and our own uh, patronage model at lovegoodculture.com is a huge way, as you said, to, to rally around people we believe in and, and ministries you want to be a part of. You know, I got to tell you, um, it's a walk of faith. 
And I tell you what, it, 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 it's a long walk, isn't it? That's right. I mean, I think people involved in the new evangelization work harder than anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mother Angelica just kind of gets a giggle, I think, too. She's like, I remember the first time I went in the EWTN studio, it was in that beautiful portrait of her. Uh, you know, she's got that kind of, she's smiling and looking at you, and you're like, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> I know something you don't know. Get ready to get to work. But people like Jimmy Mitchell so need to be and deserve to be uh, supported. There's a, in, in, I'm, I'm, in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism, Jimmy, I teach it every morning. By the way, speaking of beauty, the ocean is in the background when I teach at 7 a.m. bear time. So if I'm in Waikiki, I'm there. If I'm in Florida, it's there. Or I like being in Ireland, there was the Patrick's uh, Mountain in the background. But when I just end up having to do it out of a hotel room, hardly anybody will watch it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, no, they'll watch it. But I mean, when there's a beautiful ocean in the background, it gets yeah. all kinds of hits. So beauty, beauty, is, beauty is so important. But in the uh, DDK, which we're doing a brief little study before we relaunch again through the catechism, it says, there's a saying back in those days, don't let the, the, let the, the gift burn in your hand. It, it, the money that God has given you, uh, a 10% donation is what's basically considered about the right, what, what Christians should do biblically. Actually, Christians should give it all. But if you're holding on to God's money, mm. uh, that's a problem. It's kind of hard for me sitting here to say this, but I'm a CPA, Jimmy, mm. and I see Protestants giving 10% and Catholics basically giving away change. Mm. People like Jimmy Mitchell need to be supported. It would be a good moment for you to go check out his website at, at lovegoodculture.com and just see, hey, I want, I want to give $5 or $10 a month or, or more a month and support him so that, he, so that this ministry, uh, you know, to the millennials, which are so hard to reach mm. uh, and in such a vital and communicative way. So, uh, Jimmy, can you tell us a little bit about your own personal history and walk with the Lord? Absolutely. So I, I grew up in a pretty... Uh, we'll call it normal suburban Catholic American family, right? You know, white picket fence and everything. And uh, along the way, especially in uh, Catholic education, I had the opportunity to go to some retreats. And I'll, I'll never forget the first time kneeling on a concrete floor in the North Georgia mountains, surrounded by the beauty of God's creation, but also uh, in front of God himself in the Eucharist. And it was the first time I'd ever been to adoration. And it began this lifelong relationship of love that's been unfolding ever since. Uh, next thing I knew, I was going to Vanderbilt, which is in Nashville as an undergrad, mm -hmm. and I was surrounded by atheists and evangelicals and had to really decide who I was going to be. And, uh, you know, beauty has been a huge part of this story. I, I remember mm -hmm. mission work in Honduras that changed my mm -hmm. life, studying abroad in London, the, the Brompton Oratory, getting to know Cardinal Newman, now St. John Henry Newman. Amen. Like, these are the Amen. The big influences that C.S. I mean, and you love uh, Tolkien, obviously, and absolutely the a little bit of G.K. Chesterton heroes. thrown in or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just published a, a copy or a version of Orthodoxy that has a beautiful commissioned artwork cover, and uh, uh, you know, oh my I, I god, the, the bold it makes me kind of. I gotta. It chokes me up, dude. <laughs> the love for my friend G.K. Uh, in this day and age, you know, I have a tin photo of him that I got made. And I have it out of my lanai, my own little man cave with the, where my cigars are, right? Absolutely. And GK, man, what a, so beautiful to meet someone who loves that mind, because it means you have a beautiful mind too. Well, check this out. So I, I go to England about three times a year, and I'm constantly having to tell the story of, of Chesterton, because they just don't know him. I know! You, you can go to his hometown of Beaconsfield, and people oh. just don't get it, you know? I want to walk. Uh, I want to walk. I would, wouldn't it be cool to do a pilgrimage from G.K. Chesterton's house to C.S. Lewis's house? Let's do it. You and, and me. Tolkien's we'll house. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome, dude? Let's do a long ride home motorcycle run. You know. That sounds awesome. But that yeah. wouldn't be G.K. Like we would have to ride a bicycle or or do a nice long walk, right? <laughs> That'd be so cool. cool. And so so there there became you got to study in in England and were exposed sure. to those those people and. And then how did, what, what, so when you had that moment of adoration, you were in college. I, it was actually high school that that first mm. time in adoration took place. Mm. And then it was soon after that, you know, I had to decide like, where, where was this going to take me? You know, was mm. I so convinced of God's love that I could build my entire life around it? Or was it just going to be a, a convenient part of my week on Sunday mornings? And I think 
uh, every step of the way, it was like the Lord kept bringing me deeper. Like the mystery and the beauty just kept pulling me in. And next thing you know, I'm spontaneously, uh, without anybody telling me to, I'm going to daily mass and I'm praying a daily rosary. I'm just getting swept up in the church. Oh, praise God. And realizing, hey, this is this is it. This is the fulfillment of all desire right now. Oh, don't you love that? Yeah. <laughs> now that's um, Ralph Martin's book. Fulfilling of all desire. I so love good. that book. Love that book. So the, uh, uh, it synthesizes basically the, the spiritual teaching of all the great doctors of the faith. So, yeah. be, well, I could tell that you're in love with God. <laughs> you know, that's it, about the one thing I, I I got going for me most days. You know, <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Jimmy Mitchell. Uh, he's a, also besides the musician, you're an incredible speaker. Um, how often do you do you when you when you have a chance to teach or to or to or to be in a like a Steubenville conference or something like that, you you play your music, but then do you usually teach too, or how? Because you're teaching, you're, That's right. uh, it, it because it comes right from the heart. Yeah. Uh, but it can come from the heart and be really boring too. But <laughs> you are able to, you know, you have this ability to grab people's attention as whatever. You you would be a good person to have on right after a, car, a lunch high in carbohydrates. You probably <laughs> keep them going. <laughs> Depends on the mood, but. You know, primarily <laughs> I'm traveling as a speaker and I incorporate the music into that r- rather than the other way around. So often I'm given a, a 30 minute keynote at a conference and then I'll, I'll build a five minute song into that just to give everybody a chance Praise to pray, God. to reflect and to encounter God in a, a little bit more of a silent way. Because actually I don't sing. You, you don't want to hear me sing. I just I write uh, these piano uh, compositions with typically string quartet accompaniment and uh, and really want the beauty of that alone to, to speak and to give people a chance to go a little bit deeper. Are you using string quartets or are you using digital versions of that? It's all recorded the real, live. So, the real so thing. violin, viola, cello, upright bass, all of that's recorded. Oh, with. no, man. You forgot. You know, I'm a professional ukulele player. Ah, we, well, we got to collab. You know, uk means uh, flea and lele means dancing. So dancing flea. No, I get, I've made quite a bit of money playing my ukulele because like, I'll be playing it. And people will come up and say, I'll give you 20 bucks not to pay, not to play. <laughs> right? So that's professional, right? I get paid when I play. So, I saw that coming. Well done. <laughs> did you? I, oh, well, yeah, but I do. I do love playing my hook. I used to play the drums, dude. That's and cool. then I went to a smaller thing, the guitar. Yeah. And then I got into the first, what they used to call those Walkmans, I guess, the, 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 the you know, your, how you could carry your music with you. Right. I used to do my hiking. I would carry my hook. I said, that's my, that's my own personal, um, you know, personal music I can take with me when I'm hiking. I'm talking to, we are talking with Jimmy Mitchell from lovegoodculture.com. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to encourage you guys, go to our website, deepadventure.com. Hey, Jimmy, we got these cool things, really inspired by the Lord, uh, the Bear's Man Cave Seven Virtue Cigars, if you can believe that. Yes, it's, I've, been, it's, I've been checking this out. It's a cigar for each one of the virtues. And people love them. I mean, you can get a whole box of just one of the virtues or a mixed box if you want to. But the basic sampler of the seven virtues, uh, like I was at the EWTN studio last week and where I'm, I'm at, you know, the hotel where everybody stays. Now, I didn't stay in one of the little houses, but we we're out there for the EWTN conference, too. And a couple guy, a guy comes out and says, hey, man, you got an extra cigar because he saw me smoking it. And I gave it to him. And now we're talking about the virtue that's on that label for that cigar because when you can't smoke it without unpeeling it. And inside there, it's a, here's the virtue of Caraggio and then fortitude in English and a quote from one of my books on that. And what's happening is, is men love to have that time of solitude with just the brothers. It kind of tends to chase women away (laughs) and it's a mini vacation and to have a conversation that's a little deeper than football can be really cool. So you go to our website, deepadventure.com, our web store there, we've got the warrior rosaries and my books and and all kinds of other uh, long ride home cast member t-shirts and all kinds of cool stuff so go to deepadventure.com and check it out we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wasnick radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, I want to give a shout out to some of our patrons. You know, I, the, all these guys that I mentioned, right? Now, we have men and women. By the way, our guest Jimmy Mitchell today. Hey, Jimmy. 
are are are, are, are people who love our, our our ministry the most are women. They're like, oh, I can grab my brother and my son and my husband and have them watch this show. But I wanted to give a shout out. I decided I needed to start doing this and thanking people like Pat Gervais, Ace Bagley, uh, Peter Morton. These guys are all members of Knights on Bikes who are also Patreon donors and members of the Man Cave. And also John Clapucci, who really kind of helps me run the Man Cave. And uh, the, the, man, uh, the man of the hour, if you happen to see him at the very end of episode two, episode um, the second episode, episode, I guess it's called 12 of, of 11 of Long Ride Home and the beginning of 12 of Long Ride Home, our TV show, you see his sons demonstrate an incredibly powerful roundhouse kick to, I guess, an unexpected area. Uh, Ted Scarpino, famous now in, in legend, Joe Gomes, and wanted to thank Jerry Cohn, you guys, for donating for, to us on Patreon. Huge, uh, huge blessing, and thank you for being a part of Bears Man Cave. We have Jimmy Mitchell with us here from lovegoodculture.com. Okay, Jimmy, I want to take a deep breath now. I'm going to take off my glasses for those of you watching on YouTube. Let your vision out. Just tell us everything. Wow, that's a big question. You know, I... Along the way, especially as my own deepening of conversion was unfolding, I, I would encounter a lot of very sincere Christians um, who seemed to live in isolation. You know, they would sort of create these subcultures, which which was fine. You know, especially when you're in college and you're trying to be strengthened in your faith, or particularly sort of vulnerable seasons of life, it, it makes sense to to turn in a little bit and to, and to be strengthened by the church. But I saw one after the other. Um, fairly unable to evangelize their um, secular friends, atheists and agnostic friends. Um, and I found myself kind of realizing that, you know, just beating people over the head with my Bible or crushing them with my catechism was, was never going to be enough. Uh, and I was growing weary of a lot of the Christian media that I was consuming myself. Like I had kind of made the jump from, from mainstream to Christian, and I just found it uh, increasingly unsatisfying because there wasn't a depth. There wasn't a, an engagement with the human experience. There was just this consistent, you know, often sincere, um, you know, bringing of the gospel and 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 praying through the Psalms uh, to people through you know very contemporary music. But like, my goodness, at a certain point, um, did it, it seem like a, it seemed almost like a formula? It does. It does. And the Christian music industry is very much an industry. And so I, I kept finding these independent mm. artists who were tired of it themselves that, mm. you know, were deep into their faith, but but mm. wanted to do something richer, uh, more like uh, human, to be honest. And Amen. so um, not only was I discovering these artists, I found myself bringing them into my living room for house concerts. I, I put on live music festivals and partnership with the 40 days for life I, I did these crazy house concert tours and realized hey maybe i'm not the only patron i think there. this house concert you know? <laughs> concept you got to understand jimmy like we have this thing called bears man cave right men can join uh yeah. they go to our website and join them become part of our secret facebook group and we encourage and post and share with one another spy one another but every three two or three weeks we have zoom video chat meetups mm. and we're all together but then the thing is i want th those men now are starting man cave groups on their back deck i love it it's the it's that step before they we can get people to church that's right they'll that's right. come to someone's home to listen to your music to listen to these concerts you got to come over i got a friend of mine that's going to play we just say come on over we're gonna have some cigars and a shot of whiskey on the back porch maybe a barbecue come over and meet some great guys you can't say it, no to that you it, know? <laughs> and, and, yeah yeah it's it sounds so intriguing and so different so I really get it. I, I mean, I'm a really big believer in this because, like, I love that Man Is You program. It's for men. I started it and helped get it launched in Honolulu. But, um, man, you can't get people there if you don't first have them in the backyard and have a have, have a barbecue with them. You got to be – it's kind of fringilization or something. I don't know how you would say it. You need right. to make – you need to meet them where they are at and then bring them in. So what was your response to these house concerts that you were doing? Well, initially overwhelming because, as I mentioned, in the summer of 2013, we did 45 cities in 60 days, as far west as L.A., as far north as Boston, and as far south as Tampa. And by the end of it, I vowed I was never going to hit the road again. You know, it was yeah. exhausting. Yeah, I know the feeling, man. <laughs> when we shoot our TV show, I know the feeling. That's right. But it kind of laid the foundation for what we've now been doing for six years consistently. And I think the the, the, the reaction has been... Uh, ever deepening because people recognize, hey, in my own life, it's not easy 
uh, to invite people to mass or to convince them to go to confession if they've been away from the sacraments for 10 years. But if I can find um, a, a way in, like an entry point, specifically through beauty, through a, a, an evening of live music, through the handing off of a, of a beautiful commissioned work of art or a, a, an exclusively published book, something that feels fresh, uh, then mm-hmm. suddenly there's, an, there's an, a, a way to engage the heart and then uh, eventually you know, open the soul to I to totally God. dig that. Do you guys ever have book readings, a little bit of a book reading here and there? Yeah, I'm a big nerd. So back home in Nashville, like uh, we'll, we'll host these little out loud book reading parties. We'll, mm. we'll do like the jeweler shop by Carol Vortiva. We'll, we'll do a two and a half oh. hour out loud reading of it, you know, with glasses of wine or, or beer, craft brew, whatever. And it'll be epic. We'll get like 20 people who just want to have a moment, well, how, of, you know, culture. How can people do what you're doing? Well, see, this is it. Like, I, I think it's what you're describing by way of, of inspiring these men to start their own man caves. We have now patrons uh, who bring in house concerts independent of us uh, three, four times a year. We have patrons who have started uh, book studies um, because they're receiving all of this content from us. And now um, they might buy it in bulk or they might simply direct people to the digital version of it and 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 then have these regular gatherings of, of family and friends. I just think it's the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the, you know, my daughter, especially uh, Naomi in uh, Santa Fe, she's such a community builder. Mm. But most of all that she does is in the secular side of things. But I just think... Since she was a kid, she was a community builder. You know, she had poetry readings at the local coffee shop when she was in high school. Had I love published it. a little poetry magazine. This kind of gathering would be just, it would be, and you know, you, you, know, you do it in people's homes. Uh, but I've, here in Florida, we, I have a friend of mine who does art. Mm. He's a Christian artist and I have my books. And we've done something at the local coffee sh- shop here. I, where I did that. a reading and he displayed his art. And getting it out in the open and public like that too is going to be good. But what I so if people come to lovegoodculture.com, they can find you and you can help them, uh, you know, to get this started. Maybe go out and help them, but and then or, or or just tell them this is how we do it. What we're doing with the men's men's movement, if we have something called Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, mm. and we're getting all the leaders around and saying what works for you, what doesn't work for you. So why should someone reinvent the wheel if you've already probably blown it a few times, but you figured out what works <laughs> and what doesn't work, right? That's like, right. what time does it start? How long does it last? Do you quit on time? You know, things All like that, right? Up. They're significant. That's exactly right. And there's a lot of easy ways for people to be exposed, especially to the music that we're putting out that you can't find anywhere else. If you go to lovegoodculture.com slash free, you not only get a mixtape, uh, that's an old word from the 90s, you know, but a collection of live songs that have been recorded at these house concerts. You also mm. get onto our email list and get ongoing ins- inspiration and ongoing sort of uh, resources that I think empower you to evangelize culture through beauty. Well, your main gift is is in is keyboard and, right. mu- and, and writing music. And then how about, uh, do you have a singer that comes, is there lyrics that you, who writes the lyrics, things like that? You know, uh, back in the day, I was recording and um, actually traveling quite a bit with an artist whose name is Colleen Nixon. And we did some sacred music projects mm. actually with Ignatius Press called Marion Grace. And she is still someone to this day that I travel with quite a bit. Um, but again, really, a lot of my travels is simply as a speaker. Uh, and then I'm mm. working alongside a lot of these different artists and singer songwriters where, you know, if we do an event together, um, I'd be given a half hour talk, they'd be doing a, a half hour concert, and then we would, you know, just have a time to get to know people afterwards. Beautiful. Hey, you know who one of the great lyricists of all time is? Eva Cassidy. No, um, <laughs> Paul, Paul Simon. Who? What do you think? Mike Aquilina. Oh, Mike. Oh, my dear friend, Mike. Yeah. Do you know he writes lyrics for Dion, right? Did no, you know that? I did <laughs> yeah. not. That's crazy. I think there's probably an old baby in there or something. I don't know. But, <laughs> but it's so crazy that this grif- gift- gifted scholar and early church father is a lyricist for one of the early rockers dion you know catholic rockers of course beautiful man i'm a but big yeah. big fan of mike he's a, he's a hero and an inspiration oh me. yeah me too i love mike in fact i think i'll not do this show i won't play the show i'm gonna go interview mike and get him on <laughs> there you go <laughs> so um so we're talking with jimmy mitchell and we're talking about um beauty uh one of the five upward yearnings of man uh let us know we're not just an animal that gives us an awareness of something beyond ourselves 
and how we really need to redeem our culture. My, uh, you know, I was at the EWTN event last week, the radio conference, and they played something that I just blew me away. Have you ever heard um, Pope John Paul sing in his youth? No. You would not believe how gifted. He's a virtuoso. Wow. He's saying, I don't think it was Ave Maria, but it was a song to Mary. And he would be, I mean, I, I listened to him. He's Pavarotti. I mean, you wouldn't believe. Huh. I, I, I have to get, get his music as uh, when he was still in Poland, you know. Wow. When he was writing his when he was writing his screenplays, his voice is, it, and very, it sounds like it's more than just a voice that raw, like he, he's trained wow. to sing, praise God for, you know, what was the, what was the, he wrote, uh, I believe an encyclical on art, didn't he? Yeah, he has a letter to artists that's letter really, artists. really widely read. Yeah. Letter to artists, I know when I wrote my first book, I, re- I read that, and then sat down and uh, began to rewrite what I had written. We're talking wow. with Jimmy Mitchell from lovegoodculture.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to thank Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. I was with Bob last, I forget Bob's last name, but at the EW10 radio conference. And I love Tom Gripe and I love Bettina and the other, and Reba and the other members there at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. When you walk into the credit union in Notre Dame, it's just like, it's, it's kind of like a sacred moment. Not quite as sacred as going into the Notre Dame Stadium. But it's, it's just, there's just something really special there. Uh, that, that they, Tom Gripe really, the, the people that really, practice a whole different way of doing uh f- f- banking it's really not a bank right it's 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 run for the benefit of the members they helped me get a car loan on my you on my used cherokee two-year-old cherokee uh in waikiki because we're in the middle of filming long run home and i needed funding to uh, kind of a bridge loan while we were riding motorcycles bettina would text me email me send me something to sign online and over a three-day period we got that loan done and then we um they just, they're, they're, I've never experienced such a great personal service as Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. We would really let you, like you to go to our website and you can click on the Notre, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, uh, dot com link. And if you have a need, listen, I'm in Hawaii. Hawaii doesn't like out-of-state bankers, but somehow they took care of me and I, we just really love them. So thank you, Notre Dame uh, Federal Credit Union for helping support Long Ride Home, our sole sp- uh, corporate sponsor. We would love to have you, if you're a corporation, want to help us out, contact us. Want to invite you guys also to join the Man Cave. Bears Man Cave is pretty cool. Uh, the men from, uh, there's a group of guys called uh, um, the Catholic Man Show, Adam and David over there, have something called the Council of Men. It's a great group too. Uh, part of their radio show. I dig on these guys. They start with a review of, uh, of a, a manly beverage and then some sort of manly gear, like maybe a MacGyver knife or something. I can't believe that the local radio ministry, I think it's St. Michael's, has them on the air, and I just dig on them so much. I wear their T-shirt sometimes just to get it on, get it seen on YouTube. But I, love, I just love these guys. They have a group called the Council of Men, which is kind of simple similar to my bear's man cave you should check them out but the man cave you go to our our website deepadventure.com and you can become a member and then there you will find men that are like-minded far from perfect okay just really uh just real regular guys that are wanting to go deeper with god and grow in virtue and so we challenge each other we inspire each other we equip each other we pray for each other and then every two or three weeks we do something kind of unique that i don't know anyone else that does we have a zoom video chat meetup so all the men click on uh, special ID and we can see each other and we kind of talk story, encourage each other in, our, in, in what's going on in our lives. Some of the other men have started man caves in their backyard or in their, in their den or whatever. And, and then we go through one of my books on, on the virtues. So join Bears Man Cave Women. This is a really good time for you to ch- tell your men, come check this out. Go to deepadventure.com and there's a big warning sign. Don't click this button because it's dangerous to become a member of the man cave and check it out. We have Jimmy Mitchell with us as a guide. I really love this guy and what he's standing for. We really need uh, to redeem 
uh, our times, and this is the age of the laity, and he's doing a beautiful work in the area of, of culture. Jimmy, the, your website is what? Lovegoodculture.com. When you go out and you speak, uh, like I think you, when you speak a lot, you need to get get a hold of get a hold of Jimmy and have him come speak and share. What would you say? What would be one of the key messages that you give? I know you've spoken at the Steubenville events and That's right. other things like that. What, what, what you know? If you had only one thing to tell young people, especially, what would you say to them? Yeah, yeah. It's always the same thing for me. Um, it comes back to this fundamental love affair with the person of Jesus Christ. You know, the opening paragraphs of Chesterton's biography of St. Francis, he says, let your religion be less of a theory and more of a love affair. And once that really becomes uh, at the heart of your faith, you realize that the Eucharist, as Tolkien said, really is the greatest romance of all. You realize, as many of the great saints have said, that Life with Christ is a wonderful adventure to pull from St. John Paul II. Once romance, adventure, and uh, the fulfillment of all desire is, is understood in the person of Jesus Christ, suddenly you can't help but respond. You can't help but want to be a saint. You can't help but want to storm heaven and bring an army of souls with you. Think about this. When you go to heaven, there will be people that come up and talk to you and say, you know, you watered a seed or you planted a seed or you harvested yeah. My soul for the Lord. There was a moment when being, uh, because of God's ministry through you, I'm here in heaven. Yeah, that's the hope. You know, I've got a group of 20 high school and college age guys who come to my house every Tuesday night back home in Nashville for ongoing formation, discipleship, brotherhood, accountability. And we dug into a pretty deep conversation last week about plenary indulgences, something that we don't talk about very much in the church right now, but you you could have an arena full of souls that you helped get from purgatory to heaven just by being faithful to this little discipline that the church gives us, and Mm -hmm. and not to mention the impact of our lives and our vocations, right? Like, I I really do want an army of souls in heaven with me, uh, and I want to play some small part in everybody's journey that I meet along the way. An eternal soul in heaven forever. Well, fathers, fathers have this unique, you know, I remember the moment in my life when in, in a real boring social studies class after lunch, it was like this cosmic experience opened up in my heart that I could be a father, mm. create, be, participate, create in an eternal soul. You, you have a minute, you're seeing a, a unique ministry with fathers with their children now. That's right. Tell us what that's, that's right. about. It'd be really foolish to talk on and on about culture and never talk about the deepest wound in our culture today, which is fatherlessness. Mm. And so for most of the last 10 years, I've come alongside an apostolate called Fraternus, which does a lot of Mm. work to mentor and disciple young men in virtue. And we've just recently partnered to put on events all over the country called Reclaim Fatherhood. All all the details are actually at reclaimfatherhood.com. It's a chance for men, uh, ideally of parishes, Uh, all over the country to come together and really say, hey, uh, we're tired of living in a world of perpetual adolescence. We're tired of not being the spiritual fathers that we're supposed to be to pass on the faith to the next generation. And we're talking about living our baptismal call here. And yet at the heart of what it means to be a man is to be a father. And by and large, we're we're failing uh, on on a societal level right now. Keep going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is something I really believe in. And I, it's funny, man. I'm 33. I'm not yet married. Um, went to seminary, discerned out, uh, very much hope to be married one day. But I'm still aware of the power of spiritual fatherhood in my own life. It doesn't matter uh, if you're a dad, a granddad, or not even in a vocation yet. You, as a man, um, will, will never find more joy in this life than watching the faith come alive uh, to, to spiritually father the soul of, of a young person in your midst. And I, I think especially young men, they're crying out for it. They want to be mentored. They are hungering for fatherhood. Yeah, God said, I am the father to the fatherless. In Hawaii, my wife sees, we're, we're in Hawaii, she goes, it's so different here. Mm. The men have their own tribe. And everyone 10 years younger than me calls me uncle. Wow. Even if I've never met them, I'm their uncle. And I've uncled them they come up to me and ask me about a fight they got in or some some other issue or whatever but she says there is a community of men she she sees it much more clearly than i do but there's a community of there is a community of men there and you know the father um 
the role of father, we say, oh, God is kind of like a father, you know. It's not right. Mm. God is father. Mm. Fatherhood, by its very nature, procreates. Eternally begotten son. Eternally begotten son. That love, who, who did God love before he created any other beings? Mm. It was the eternal God, the Trinity, had this love amongst themselves. Can you imagine being in the middle of that? Yeah. Wow. If God by his very essence is love, I've had, I've had glimpses of it, haven't you? Yeah. You just feel that shiny, sparkling something <laughs> happening in you when you're in prayer. You know, there's moments of unexpected infusion, sometimes happening at the most unexpected places. That's right. At unexpected times when you get a glimpse of God's love. Can you imagine being in the presence of love like that forever? But God is a father, and he calls you and I, men, men all men, to be fathers, whether in the role of actually having children in a family or a priest or just, just uncleing those around you. Uh, we're called to be fathers, and, and it's not just like God's kind of a father. We have a unique calling to uh, father the fatherless. That's right. I'm reading this brand new book by Cardinal Seurat. The, the day is now far spent. And he, he spends a whole section specifically talking about fatherhood and manhood and how they are inseparable. And he said, you know, to, to say the least, one of our greatest dignities as men uh, is to reveal the fatherhood of God. Mm. And, when, and when we don't reveal the fatherhood of God, uh, we're not just letting the world down. Um, we're, we're settling for a, a life of uh, I would say quiet desperation because we're and not lack, tapping in to what, we, what we're most made for. And certainly lack of meaning. That's right. We find our meaning, you know, people go, well, I got to get a job that I really love. I mean, actually, probably you don't. Yeah. Most, <laughs> most people don't have jobs that they love. But you can have a job that's full of meaning mm. because you're there to serve the customer and to, and to, and to uh, help your boss reach his goals those who may work for you and to serve your family. You find your meaning in giving, in self-donation, mm. uh, not necessarily in saying, I've always wanted to be an interior designer. I'll be happy when I'm that. No, you're happy when you give your life away. We're talking with Jimmy Mitchell. We've run out of time. Where can they find you again, Jimmy? That's right, lovegoodculture.com, and specifically that event for men, reclaimfatherhood.com. I'm going to email you, Jimmy, and make sure that you guys, I'm sure CMLA is already involved. The Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, I'm sure, already knows about this. But, you know, we have maybe a couple hundred leaders of men's ministries. And wow. we have a monthly phone call, a conference call. And then an annual, we're going to have our third, uh, our third event um, uh, this summer again, where we're getting together and really working hard to help each other's ministries. So Amazing. Great to be Catholic, isn't it? It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> so the lovegoodculture.com for Jimmy and deepadventure.com for us. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.